urine recatheterization. When normal urine revoiding cannot be maintained, catheterization may be required. Urine recatheterization is only performed if absolutely necessary, as the procedure has risks including infection and trauma. Urine recatheterization may be short term, long term, or permanent. A catheter may be inserted for a short period of time when a patient is undergoing an operation, during childbirth, is unconscious, or to clear the bladder of debris following injury or surgery. A catheter may be inserted for a longer period of time when there is an obstruction in the urinary tract, such as a swollen prostate in men, if the patient is very weak and unable to use the toilet or bedpan, or as the final step to managing urinary incontinence. A patient may have a permanent catheter if the nerves and muscles of the bladder are ineffective or compromised, for example as multiple sclerosis progresses or when there has been severe spinal trauma. Catheterization may be intermittent or indwelling. Many advanced nursing skills pose significant risk to patients if not performed with appropriate skill, knowledge, judgment and therefore competence. Passing an instrument beyond the opening of the urethra is a controlled act under the Regulated Health Professions Act. Although it is one of the controlled acts authorised to nursing, most agencies require a medical order before the procedure may be initiated. Urinary catheterization is the insertion of a small, flexible tube through the urethra into the bladder for the purpose of removing urine. The insertion of a urinary catheter compromises the body's normal defence mechanisms. The nurse must minimise the risk of infection through the use of sterile technique and appropriate catheter care after insertion. To reduce the risk of tissue trauma, careful technique during insertion and proper stabilisation and positioning of the catheter after insertion are essential. Catheters are commonly made of rubber, latex, silicon or thermoplastic. They may consist of one, two or three lumens. Indwelling catheters have a balloon at one end, which the nurse will inflate with sterile water once the catheter is in place in the bladder. The purpose of the balloon is to hold the catheter in the bladder. Intermittent catheters, also known as straight catheters, do not have a balloon, as the catheter is manually held in place for only a short period of time before being removed. These are two examples of straight catheter. Note the fact that the catheters have no balloon and only one lumen. This is an example of an indwelling Foley catheter. You can see a hole and balloon at the proximal end of the catheter. At the distal end, you may see two openings. Urine will drain out through the middle lumen and it is this opening which will be attached to the drainage bag. The second opening is for inflating the balloon. It has a valve to ensure the balloon stays inflated once the appropriate amount of sterile water has been inserted. The third type of catheter has three lumens. This allows fluid to be irrigated into the bladder and urine to drain out via a separate route. This indwelling catheter also has a valve lumen by which the balloon will be inflated. When choosing the appropriate catheter, the nurse must consider the gauge of the catheter, the length of the catheter, the size of the balloon, and the length of time the catheter will be inserted. The patient's allergies must also be checked carefully. The gauge of the catheter should be appropriate to the width of the urethral canal. Typically, women require a 14 or 16 French and men an 18 French. As the female urethra is shorter than the male, a female will require a shorter length of catheter, typically 22 centimetres. A male will require a 40 centimetre length in order to reach the bladder. The balloon can be a 5 mil, 10 mil or 30 mil balloon. This describes the exact amount of sterile water required to inflate the balloon. Do not add more than this stated by the manufacturer and only use sterile water as other fluids such as saline can block the balloon preventing its deflation later. Most adults require a 5 mil balloon. If the catheter is to remain in place long term or permanently, it should be flexible, hypoallergenic and pose a low risk of infection.
Latex catheters, although flexible, are used less frequently due to risk of latex allergy. The nurse must use care with patients who have an allergy to latex, both in the choice of catheter as well as the type of sterile gloves donned for the procedure. Once the procedure of catheterization is complete, the nurse must document the catheter gauge, length and balloon size in the patient's chart. Intake and output must be monitored and recorded. Any urine collected for laboratory analysis should be labelled correctly and sent promptly. The nurse must continue to assess the patient with an indwelling catheter for signs and symptoms of complications. The tubing should be free of obstructions and should not be leaking, and it should be draining freely unless otherwise stated. The urine should be assessed for colour, odour, amount and abnormal elements which may indicate infection or trauma. It is important to health teach patients who are managing catheter care in their own homes. To reduce the risk of infection, the patient must be taught to maintain an appropriate fluid intake, keep the drainage bag below the level of the bladder, avoid tub baths and ensure the tubing does not become twisted or obstructed. Teach the patient the signs and symptoms of infection such as abdominal pain, burning sensation, urgency and changes to the look and smell of the urine. It is important to remember that confusion in older adults may be the first sign of a urinary tract infection.